Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is celebrating our 20th anniversary of bringing you the Gulf Coast's finest chefs cooking their delicious recipes with natural gas. This show is brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Clean, efficient, natural gas. And now, Coastal Cooking. It is my pleasure to welcome back Executive Chef Daniel Watts from the Wine Bar on Palafox. Good to be back. Well, Thank listen, you. I'm glad to have you back because you are here to show us three new dishes on your menu. Absolutely. And we are going to start with dessert. One of my favorite things to do. <laughs> Mine too, just like the French. <laughs> start with dessert. Yeah, so this, tell us about what this is. It's a special kind of cheesecake. This is going to be a Nutella cheesecake, the uh, delicious chocolate and hazelnut yes. spread that everybody loves from Italy. And uh, it's just with a simple graham cracker crust and uh, some powdered cups to be a little powdered sugar in there and they're made kind of be personalized at dessert courses or whatever. We do it in a big pie form at work, but mm -hmm. I like to show it individual for people who want to go to yes. partying and stuff like that. Yes, and it's a very nice, it's just enough, isn't it? Exactly. When you make it yeah. in the little, the little dishes. Great here. way to control how much dessert you have. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you can't go back for two or three of those. Who right? wants to do that? <laughs> So I'm just gonna quickly just take some bu melted butter and graham cracker crumbs here. Okay. Mix them together, just like tablespoon of powdered sugar. So you add in the powdered sugar with the butter and graham cracker crumb mixture, spread it together. This is just real simple graham cracker crust, almost all your uh, home pies are like mm -hmm. this. Good little mixture on it so you can press it into the cups here. And you, did you butter these? A little bit of butter and powdered sugar just to get them so it's easy to eat out of there right. without too much okay. sticking and so. stuff. Okay. Just do about a third of your cup full, pack mm -hmm. it down with your spoon. Or a great dessert to have, make ahead of time, isn't it? Oh yeah, and it's nice to just keep them in the fridge. Mm -hmm. They don't, I mean, change flavor or anything. It's really just nice, easy to wrap. And, and these get chilled? It's nice to chill these and get this cr uh, bottom crust a little bit firm mm -hmm. before you top it in. But with a smaller area like this, you can pack it in tight and it lasts well. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, in this larger bowl over here, mix the cream cheese, Nutella, and the rest of the powdered sugar. What a unique idea, putting the Nutella in there. And it's simple, it's the cream cheese is the exact same measurements by weight as the uh, Nutella, so it's mm -hmm. real easy to remember. I've made it about a dozen times and... Gosh, I can eat that <laughs> Nutella just with a spoon. I have you know, to, just I have to keep, I gotta keep this in our office so my staff doesn't do that. <laughs> it is so good, and it's got the hazelnut, right. doesn't it? Um, it's just taste. nice creamy chocolate to chew on any time yes. nice. It's good on just about anything. And then uh, you rest your powdered sugar goes in this. Mm -hmm. Not too many calories, huh, Daniel? You're right, right, not at all. So just whip it until it's kind of pretty smooth. You get mm -hmm. a good mix on that, and then we'll uh, portion it into Pack the cups. It in, huh? It's nice. Oh yeah. There's so many things you can do with cheesecake. Oh, yeah. You know, different absolutely. ingredients, toppings, just you name it. So versatile. I'm going to use the whisk right here. It's a nice thick mixture, too, isn't it? Yeah, and this you'll pat down also into it. Mm -hmm. And once it's all cooled together, it's a nice, nice, mm -hmm. smooth, creamy mixed a dessert. Good consistency, in there. Yeah. isn't it? I'll move these over here so we can. I'm actually going to get my hands involved. Why don't you do that? Just get in and do it, huh? Yep. You'll get a better That's mix the anyways. easiest way. Because it's so stiff. Let's see. Let's get you here. There we go. It's hard to mix it, isn't it, with a spoon? You just about have to knead it. That cream cheese just doesn't want to, once it's warmed up for a little bit, but mm -hmm. you don't want it too warm or it'll, yeah. you know, you got to wait forever right. for it to get back into the... Right, now Pondo. it's coming together. There it yeah. goes. Nutella back on attack. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna use the same spoon, put that in the cups. Mm -hmm. and we'll chill this while we uh, make the rest of the lunch. Okay, sounds great. 
And you were located, gosh, in one of the best spots on Palafox. I the think. breezeway. The breezeway with Jefferson Street Garage parking right behind you. Yep. And uh, facing Palafox, so you get all that outdoor dining in the breezeway and out front, don't you? And gallery nights are always a hit, you know, because people just... Oh, yeah. We're the walkthrough place. Yep. I know it well. It used to be my office. I know, for years. <laughs> we miss you down in Palafox. Oh, well, I miss you, too. I, I love downtown. But Hurricane Ivan just kind of yeah, it changed ste everything. stepped in and changed everything, didn't it? Yeah, it did. We've had some interesting weather through, through yes. the ages. But I'm glad you're able to enjoy that space now. Look right, at that. So. Look how pretty that is. Then we just take and I've got a mixture of pecans and powdered sugar mm -hmm. that I've robo-cooped together and toasted off in the oven. And we're going to top these and let them relax in the uh, fridge while we make the rest okay. of our meal. Be ready at the end of the show. <laughs> For you guys. That's right. For you guys to enjoy. Well, somebody has to, right? <laughs> Quality control. Yes, absolutely. If any of our viewers want to try this, they know where to find it. Or they can make it at home, right? They can get the recipes. All the recipes. Me, yeah. mm -hmm. It's almost not fair. Very quick and easy. Just come out and see me. Yes. Well, sometimes it's easier to do that. Oh, yeah. You know, just let you do the honors. Then we'll take these and uh, have them ready with a little mint okay. at the end of the day. Okay. Sure. Perfect. Be delicious. Well, while these are chilling, let's take a commercial break and regroup for our next dish. Sounds like a plan. Okay, we'll be right back after these messages. Heat pumps don't pump much heat. In fact, heat from an efficient natural gas heater can be 30% warmer, and you can get up to an $800 rebate when you install one. Warming up to natural gas yet? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. You have a choice. Energy that comes from burning dirty coal or energy from a clean natural source. Pensacola Energy Natural Gas. You have a choice. A bulky electric hot water heater that runs out of hot water or a sleek tankless water heater that gives you hot water for as long as you need it. Choose a natural gas tankless water heater and get up to $1,000 in rebates from Pensacola Energy. To learn more, call Pensacola Energy today. Heating water with electricity versus natural gas can cost twice as much. And tankless natural gas water heaters can add even more savings. So don't get soaked with higher energy costs. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Our next dish from the wine bar on Palafox is? This is a dish we call the goat cheese tower. And it's uh, layers of a goat cheese spread made with cream cheese and goat cheese I've already mixed. I'm going to cut in some butter before we make the towers. And it's got apricots that are diced and dried, and then dried cherries. I rehydrate both of them, one with a red wine blend and the apricots with a cherry. A little bit of honey, reduce it down about 30, 40%, and use, reserve the rest of the juice as a finish. Ooh, Served with some so crostinis. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. <gasps> so we're gonna go ahead and get to putting this together. Okay. Um, the dried cherries first. Just regular dried cherries. Regular dried cherries. You can get them at uh, Everman's or any other local market. Mm -hmm. um, roughly enough to just cover the cherries halfway. On and that's a Cabernet? This, is, uh, this is a Cabernet Sauvignon, yes. Okay. And so we'll get that to level out in the pan. A tablespoon of honey or so. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to fire these off in just a second. And these are, and this you're, you're going to wait for those to get thick. Right, we right. cook it down okay. until it gets okay. thick. Okay. We're putting uh, the same amount of honey mm -hmm. in with uh, Chardonnay and apricots, all of which. This just sounds Same good. amount of wine, yeah, cook it down. And you'll know when they're thick enough, Daniel? Absolutely. Can you spoon it? I mean, is it? It's, yeah, it's like tacky almost. It okay. comes in a, a syrup form. Mm -hmm. Okay. And at first, you know, you want to get them to a boil so it'll all come together and really mm -hmm. open up. And then you want to cut it back so that you don't scorch it. And, you know, we've got a couple right. other things to do here so you don't want okay. to burn them. This is very different. I put the lids back on the wine because I actually drink what I cook with. 
not all chefs do. That's a good rule of thumb, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Always. So we've got the uh, cream cheese and goat cheese already mixed in together. Room temperature butter, we're gonna mix this in. And then we've taken some, uh, just a two inch PVC and we've cut it into whatever height you want. We use a, about a three and a half inch height for our molds in the wine bar. It's an easy little way to go with it. And then uh, cut down some parchment, rolled it and put it inside. What's the parchment paper for? To, to lift them out? We'll keep it okay. from sticking to the pipe, okay. yeah. And the, instead of using like a pan spray or anything, right. you want to have something, right. it'll just slide right out. Oh, perfect. So, perfect. yeah, real nice. I have already started off and got some work down over here so that we can mix these and make them up. Mm -hmm. This is a, one of our best sellers as far as the share plates on our menu. Tell us about your share plates. What are they? It's, it's a large portion of our menu of where it's items that, you know, if you don't feel like eating one certain item, they're great to have a couple of them on the table and everybody gets okay. a piece of it. Perfect. You know, uh, we've got tomato bruschetta that's a hit and we've got um, a couple other things that just go off real big. Mm -hmm. Our baked brie, I mean, everybody oh. seems to love that the most. So this, just a nice scoop for the bottom. It's about third of a uh, quarter of what I'm working with here. Mm -hmm. Another beautiful presentation. And get that to work down there. You know, these two dishes over here smell wonderful. You think it's yeah. the wine? The wine's starting to cook down a little bit. Do you have to worry about that flambeing? flambeing? Uh, no, not if you keep your, like I said, you want to start with them a heavy boil and cut them back okay. and you'll cook them down enough, it won't be an issue. Okay. Of course, it's sticking for me. Nice. There we go. Yeah, you have to gingerly do this, don't you? Just oh, yeah. Really kind of work with it. And these are going to be served on... Um, with a side of the, the fresh crostinis, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And then I put the cherries in the middle mm -hmm. so that they don't have a tendency. They'll be uh, squeezed between the two layers of goat cheese since they like to kind of roll around. Constantly pressing it down so everything sticks to the bottom as right. best you can. And look how they plumped up. They absorb all that nice red wine in there and the sugar. Yes. And the alcohol will generally cook off if you take, mm -hmm. your, take a nice amount of time. Another scoop of goat cheese. Do these need to chill? It's nice to have them sitting off, you know, you could do, like I said, you could do a couple extra in the fridge, mm -hmm. let them hang out there, and actually have them sitting around and ready to go if you just wanted a snack on them at home at night yeah. or something. Then we top this with apricots. Oh, look at that. And it's important to pack it, isn't yeah. it? It keeps everything um, layering yeah. out nicely in there. I'm gonna work out the second one real quick so we can have two of them. Okay. You could probably serve these with uh, any type of wine. Actually, yeah, it's very versatile. You know, in this time of year, we've got a lot of uh, nice whites coming out and mm -hmm. uh, traversimeters and everything like from yes. Germany. So you get some really, Speaking really of wine, nice wines. Daniel, you've got an extensive wine. We do retail yeah, available uh, at the restaurant. Yeah, we do. A That's why you're the wine Retail, bar. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we keep our shelves full, and you know, forty wines by the glass on our menu. Gosh. And then uh, we run our happy hour from eleven to six every day, where it's a uh, half price by the glass wines, which is you know just amazing. Mm -hmm. Keeps the crowd in there. <laughs> And then cheeses, you've got. Uh, I keep an amazing there, variety of cheeses on, on the, basically in the back, ready right for the cheese boards and the uh, mm -hmm. plates we do. Mm -hmm. So it's it's always good if you just uh, want to come in and sit down and enjoy something light. Cheese fare is good, or s try one of our small plates. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful for an afternoon on Palafox after uh, you've done some shopping or. This you know, nice like seasonal said, breezes night. have been great sure. also. 
So this one, I'll uh, go ahead and plate it up. I'll show you how we share it at the uh, restaurant. So okay. you see how we can, uh, how it would be used as a share plate. A little green onions, just to start the base, holding everything together. Mm -hmm. See the importance of that parchment paper? Oh, look at that. And so, you put some on the bottom too. You wanted to make sure. No, nah, I just had it so that it uh, okay. didn't stick to the cutting oh, board see. there. Okay. And then we'll roll oh. this jewel. That this is, is beautiful. This is the sauce that comes after we've cooked these down about halfway. Mix it together. You're nice, such a chef. Nice little pile of crostinis. <laughs> That is, that is, that is spectacular. Look at that. That is beautiful. One of the many small plates you have on your menu. Yes. Right? That is beautiful. Too, too pretty to eat. That is not You really got to just look at it for a while, you for know? For a minute or two, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. That is beautiful. I see people dive right in. I don't know who I'm talking well, about. Well, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to dive right in, too. I Absolutely. can't wait. Um, we have got uh, our entree yep. coming up. I'm going to share my burgers with you guys. Oh, man, you're in for a treat. Three special burgers That's right. from the wine bar. All yeah. right, we're going to start that right after this. Stay with us. Natural gas dryers may cost a little more than electric ones, but they dry clothes quicker, making them cost half as much to run. So now who's getting taken to the cleaners? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Did you know that BTU for BTU natural gas can be up to 50% cheaper than electricity? And did you know Pensacola Energy is offering rebates up to $1,000 when you switch from an electric water heater to natural gas? In the end, it's your money. You can put it in your pocket, or you can watch it go down the drain. Contact Pensacola Energy to learn how you can start saving now. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Up next, we've got three special hamburgers from the wine bar. The, yeah, today we've uh, I brought some burgers in to prepare. We do a burger of the week at the wine bar and a standard burger that's basically not really standard. We use an 80-20 uh, fat to meat ratio on our burgers, our ground chuck and sirloin. And uh, it just works out the pan searing, holds in all the juices, mm -hmm. finish them in the oven. It's just a really nice juicy burger that we sell a ton of. So Okay. These are kind of, I would consider, gourmet burgers. They're high quality ingredients and it's like uh, the, the ingredients make the difference for sure. Hamburger ingredients for sure. So I'm just putting a little salt and pepper, and uh, one of these burgers today we're gonna do with uh, lightly blackened Maytag blue cheese and applewood smoked bacon. Another one we're doing with uh, spinach and Tillamook cheddar, and the third one's gonna be with baby arugula, uh, sauteed onions, brie on a kabata bun. So it should be a I nice show. I told you they were gonna be good, and this is just the start. So, so if season you've got goes hot side oil on, yeah. in your pan. Yeah, and I'm using a canola and olive oil blend. I don't mm -hmm. use all olive just so it uh, handles the heat a little better. Mm -hmm. These burgers are going to bring some fat to the pan too. Okay. So this is a, get a good hard sear on both sides. And then just like we do to the restaurant, we top them, get them in the oven, get that melt going. Yep. And then you get your burger bun set up with all your ingredients. You know, just the arugula is key. Mm -hmm. I put tomatoes on all my burgers, and I almost always want an onion on there, so it's, yes. personally that's how I work them in. Fresh spinach? Fresh spinach, always fresh ingredients at the wine mm -hmm. bar. All our sauces are made in-house, it's just, makes for a better day. It certainly does, and that's gonna, almost what your patrons <laughs> expect, right? I'd hope so. I'm going to loosen these up in the oil a little bit. This is just some green onions I'm going to put on the black and blue with bacon burger. Okay. It's an onion, you know, it's a little different, the sure. different setup. Mm -hmm. So the kabata bun's got the arugula on it, and then the cheddar spinach, and some green onions. Okay. Um, Daniel, I know that listed on your menu is the best burger on Palafox. It's, it's spoke of as the best burger on Palafox. <laughs> tell, us, tell us 
curious about it. Well, it's a, when we decided to put burgers on the menu not too long ago, uh -huh. I guess it's been over a year now, it was just an idea of like, let's see, add something different. And so we did a burger that was basically my choice of toppings. And I've done everything from pate on there with uh, mushrooms and other such to, you know, fried eggs on bagels with, wow. you know, it's like a bacon, egg, and cheese bagel with uh -huh. a hamburger stuffed on it. So uh, it's all across the board getting to play yeah. with the burgers. And you know what I love is you change your menu every week. Right, we, we do a reprint, so it always gives us an option. You know, our wine list is always changing on what's on the by the glass menu. So when we have all those going on, I get an option to change food when I want to. Yeah, absolutely, and you have a burger of the week? Burger of the week. And we do, a, you know, just our standard burger also. So our uh -huh. burger of the week is, however I feel that we should be doing a burger Whatever that week. Whatever mood you're in that yeah. week, huh? I, I love mean, it. I've got a nice, it's a cheese shop and wine bar, so I have several, several different types of cheese there mm -hmm. readily avail available mm -hmm. for me, so options are endless, really. Sure, sure. And you know it keeps things fresh for you, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, it's not a stagnant idea, you know. Mm -hmm. It's never just like same burger, same che cheese. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and top all these and get them in the oven so they can melt the cheese and be ready when they're ready. This has got the uh, caramelized onions. Tillamook and the spinach. Tell us about this cheddar. Tillamook is a cheddar out of Oregon. It's one of the best cheddars I've ever had. This is the extra sharp version. I've seen it in a lot of the local grocery stores. And I know Everman's has a great cheese selection I believe it's mm. in. It's just really nicely aged, great. You can tell like the uh, climate where the cows are actually spending their time is a really nice environment. It's good green grass. So you put I know that sounds odd, but every chef I know <laughs> can tell you the difference between, you know, like right. an arid environment. Now. Sure. So you put the brie on the grilled, uh, with the grilled onions. Right. Okay. And then you got, this is marvelous blue cheese. A little Maytag blue cheese. Oh, the best. The, the Maytag family, some of the cousins didn't want to sit there and make washers and dryers, so <laughs> they actually got into the dairy industry. Is that, seriously? That's the story. Yeah, that's, I mean, the true story. I have never heard of that. I would never even put the name with that washing machines, but yeah, it's uh, it's actually one of the things on the creamery label is uh, not all of us wanted to make home appliances, so it's kind of funny. I'll be darned. Um, so we've got all of our our burgers in there with our toppings. So when we finish them off, we just yeah, and, put them uh, on the other buns. That's it. You know, right now I've put my tomatoes on there to hold. Mm -hmm. You notice I don't put any condiments on the bread. I don't think that they need it. Because once, once you, uh, yeah, once you enjoy the burger, you'll say there's no need for mayonnaise, right. mustard, or ketchup. Yeah. But we have it if, if you want it. If your so patrons want it, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Tell everyone where you're located. We're lo we're located just south of Garden Street on Powell Fox, mm -hmm. right on the left. If you're going south, so if you're going to a ball game or something, and you're out and about, by. yeah. The weather's beautiful, so mm -hmm. sit out under the umbrellas on the street. We're at the corridor or at the breezeway between Jefferson Street yes. Garage and Powell Fox. I love it because you've got indoor and outdoor dining. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's very you nice. know even our outdoor is kind of indoor. It's shaded. Just, yeah. yeah, you are under the breezeway. It's a real nice, comfortable environment. Uh -huh. It is, and it's just so much fun on gallery night. Yeah, it's, my goodness. We draw a crowd, and it's nice because uh, it's it's a good crowd. You know, it's everybody's mm -hmm. in that wine presents a certain type of mood. And right. We're all about that mood. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, we're going to give everyone our telephone number right now while our burgers cook. Okay. If you would like copies of today's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy at 436-5050, or you can visit our website at www.coastalcooking.com. Just got to finish pulling our cheesecakes out of the refrigerator. They've set up nicely, and oven's about finished with the burgers, so we're gonna go ahead and pull them out. Mm -hmm. After we garnish these with some nice fresh mint, just for aromatics and color. Oh, doesn't that dress it up? And mint's always so nice just to have at the end. Mm-hmm. What a beautiful It also gives dessert. them a little second to open up. You know, your mint to open up over the dessert. And you know that is just enough, isn't it? Oh yeah. Let's check beautiful. on these burgers and we're ready.
Oh, those look great. Wow. Now you cook these at what temperature? Uh, yeah. Between 375 and 400, just okay. depending on how hard I want to cook them down. I'm a mid red burger kind of person, so, right. you know, 400, two minutes. Okay. <laughs> it's good Not sear and it's done, yeah. So we're going to go and plate them up, top them off, and mm -hmm. see about these. That is quite a burger. How many of these do you sell in a week? Uh, over a hundred. Gosh. <laughs> Which is pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, that is it. That. That one is overflowing there. <laughs> Yeah, seeing them go out and just how happy people are with a nice burger. Well, when they makes see it, it so worth that's it. pretty impressive, Daniel. You know, a little kitchen can do big things. Sure can. And a creative chef can do great things, right? Sure can. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, our gourmet burgers from the wine bar. I love it. <gasps> Perfect. Now, you were open seven days a week? I'm we're looking to go to do on Sunday, so yeah, let's say seven days a week. Okay, and for lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner. Open at 11. Until. Until. Until we don't have enough guests to Okay, so that could be over. the wee hours of the morning, huh? You know, uh, by law we can serve alcohol until <laughs> 2.30 in the morning, so yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> that would attract I'll a lot of people, right? I'll serve food if there's people. Oh, yeah. certainly. Well, you've got a website yeah, you yeah. want to tell everybody about? Thewinebar.com. Or the mm -hmm. wine bar on palafox.com. Okay, and they can go there and look at your menu and. And I just everything. found out they can check out this video on YouTube. Yes, there, so. yes, we're going to have a link on your website to awesome. this show on yep. YouTube. How about that? That's so they can rewatch awesome. it and Every uh, time. share it with their friends. They can watch it all the time if they need that's to. That's right, that's right, <laughs> it's perfect. You can even play it in your restaurant. Uh, there we go. Yeah. You need a, just a TV and you'll be in business. They can huh? watch me prep their burgers. That's right. <laughs> but you know what I love about your restaurant? You are out in front. Yeah, it's open air, so you can walk right up. People and can actually see all come this in happening. as you come in the front door. You know there's a chef right there, <laughs> and you can there. watch him make your dish. Smiling most of the time. That's <laughs> right. That's right. And the aroma is just fabulous. Thanks. You know, it just wafts out into the breezeway. It's so nice. That's how we draw people in. I think so. Mm. I know you draw me in. Well, this has been delightful. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing all these great dishes from the wine bar. Open now, what, five years? Five years, coming up wow. on five years. Yeah. Isn't that something? Well, it's, congratulations. That's a feat. It feels great. Yes, and I know how busy Palafox is. So It's growing as fast as we can You're handle. You're going great guns, right? <laughs> right. Here we go. Love it. Love it. Well, we uh, thank you again for joining us and sharing these recipes Thanks with for us. Having me again. We want to thank all of our viewers for joining us, and we hope you'll do so again next week for more Coastal Cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.